The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to The Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it in the Night Pan Studios. I am Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all your social media. I want to say thank you. Thank you for watching this show. Thank you for supporting this show. And thank you for supporting my special. Go check it out. It's on my YouTube. It's called Lefty Sun. It's something I directed, produced, did all of it, and uh, very proud of it. All right, so check that out. Share it with some friends. Um, and then come see me on tour, all new material coming on tour, uh, starting in Fort Wayne, Indiana, May 26th and 27th. I'll be in Tacoma, Washington on June 23rd and 24th in Appleton, Wisconsin, July 7th and the 8th. Uh, yeah, that's Indy 500 weekend. So for the 14 people that are going to be left in Fort Wayne, come on out and see your boy. Uh, and if you got to have more, then you got to check out the Patreon it's called The Honeydew With Y'all. It's five bucks a month. There's no tiers and levels and shit like that. It's just The Honeydew With Y'all. And y'all have the craziest fucking stories out there. Check it out. It's worth a month of it, I promise you. If you sign up for a year, you're getting over a month free. All right. You're also getting The Honeydew a day early. You're getting it ad free. You're getting the audio and the video separately if you want it. And no additional costs. All right. Now. That's the biz. You guys know what we're doing over here. We're highlighting the lowlights, and I'm very excited to have this guest back on the Honeydew. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Anthony Ferraro. Welcome Ew. back to the Honeydew, Anthony. What's going on? It's a pleasure to have you back, young man. It's good to hear your voice in person. That's, the- <laughs> That's nice of you to say. Thank you. <laughs> I can't tell. You're the only guy I could tell how good looking I am. You That's know what I mean? It, man. I'm a good look. I'm telling you, don't listen to what anybody says. You man. are I'm a great looking <laughs> black man. <laughs> You know what? <laughs> you just said see, even before we started recording, when you first heard me, you thought I was a black guy. And I said, you know, I've gotten that a lot, and that's how Tom Segura and I met. And Tom Segura has sight. <laughs> <laughs> it's your cadence, man. I don't know you what it see, is. You should see. You should see. I got nice. I'm an Italian American. I got nice olive skin. I don't have that white shit. Yeah, I got nice me too. olive I'm, skin. Man. I've been told I have darker skin in the yeah. summertime. Yeah, for then sure. Then I get pasty. I look nicer with a little, you know, sun kissed on my face. <laughs> um, all right. Before we get into um, everything we're going to talk about today, please plug, promote everything. Yeah, I got. Um, Everything's on asfvision.com, ASF Vision across the board for social medias. I got my uh, document or the Four Bad Eyes podcast with Dan Mancina everywhere you stream podcasts, and then uh, my wrestling documentary. Even if you don't know wrestling, it's a great film to watch because it's a lot more than that. It's about like overcoming obstacles and pushing through adversity. It's called A Shot in the Dark on. Amazon Prime, the Vimeo, great title. yeah, Vimeo, uh, and Apple TV and Google Play. Now you were telling me outside that your brother and someone else, who else was it, that did a documentary about that did actually produce this? Yeah, so this guy, uh, my brother, made a little teaser about me talking about what it's like to be a blind wrestler wrestling like sighted kids. And dealing with, like, I used That's to... That's what you all call us, sighted? Yeah, you fucking able-bodied pieces of shit. <laughs> Sorry, demonetizing already. <laughs> you struck a nerve. If YouTube demonetizes this, <laughs> it's a hate crime, <laughs> That's goddamn That's it, it. ableist. <laughs> uh, sighted, you told us, this motherfucker. <laughs> you sighties. Uh, sighties. But, no, I... Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> It was. Uh, I've already learned it so much. People used to say, like, because when I wrestled, you start from the line, you know, in the middle, mm-hmm. and I would have to start. It's two hand touch, so my hands would be touching yours, and then the second referee blows the whistle, we start wrestling. You have to stay in contact, mm-hmm. and the second we break away, they gotta uh, blow the whistle so no one gets hurt okay. and brings back to the center. So people would say I had an unfair advantage. Or that I was faking my blindness to uh, get an unfair advantage in wrestling. This is, it's actually this, I don't mean to interrupt you, but this is what I call, it's actually, it's an unfair disadvantage. (laughs) You don't have sight. It's like those guys with those fucking legs in the Olympics that are like the spring legs and they're hauling ass past everybody. They're like, that's an unfair advantage. I'm like, it's it's an unfair disadvantage. (laughs) (laughs) 
That's an unfair disadvantage. That's what I'm saying. I remember one time someone was saying to my dad, like, you know, it's messed up. You're having your kid fake blindness to get an unfair advantage. And at the time when he was doing that, I was tripping over the bleachers, having no idea where I was. (laughs) Trying to get after yeah. him, like, listen, you mother. The first time it happened was my eighth, so seventh grade was my first year wrestling, uh-huh. and I was awful. Like, I was like, I'm gonna go out there and beat everyone. I went two and 12, and one of the wins was a forfeit where you just get your hand raised. Yeah, the kid d- <laughs> and, didn't make weight. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, yeah. <laughs> and then I like started training every day at a club, four nights a week, going to tournaments every weekend. And uh, eighth grade, I ended up going undefeated. And in the track, now are you wrestling sighted kids? Yes, able bodies, able bodies, and you're eight and zero in that motherfucker. I'm twenty four and zero. Damn, in eighth grade. yeah. And then I was doing really well. And in the last match, the last tournament, what weight class? One sixty. My whole life, oh, still yeah. fighting one sixty. Okay. Are you really? Yeah. Um. So I was losing thirteen nothing, and the the kid. Uh, we're on our feet and my dad's like don't give up you know you gotta throw him I threw him to his back and pinned him everyone goes crazy and the dad the you kids, hit him like a lateral drop yeah lat oh, drop exactly that's exactly what bro, I, he that's was the, leaning that's, that's the grand slam yeah, of he was fucking leaning. wrestling he's leaning and yeah. then someone's like yeah. you're, you're out of bounds I pulled the kid inside <gasps> I was like yeah, yeah. yeah and freaking <laughs> prayed that that ref was gonna slap the mat I was yeah. like hey you know God, dear God, life please. Oh my god, thank god. <laughs> I'm not even happy. I'm yeah, relieved. I was, exactly. I didn't even like jump up. Yeah. I was like, that really happened. Yeah. And, <laughs> and the kid shook my hand, no problem. The, the dad came over to my dad and was like, Your son has an unfair advantage in this sport. It's not fair to my kid. He needs to go in the Special Olympics. My What's the unfair like, advantage? That I have to stay in contact. He's like, It throws my I kid's see. game off. I see. I see. And then my dad's like, Get out of here. This kid just worked his ass off. Like, you know, whatever. And my brother saw me dealing with all this stuff, like in high school, because he was a great wrestler. Can I, I, I forget. I apologize. No, did, were, were you born blind, yeah. or or did you lose your sight at a certain age? No, I was born with a degenerative eye born condition, with, okay. and it was sort of like it was still terrible sight. But I used to be able to see like pretty decent for me. And then seventh grade, junior year of high school, and like a couple years ago, lost like huge chunks. You just wake up and you're like. Oh shit! And you know, I'm not seeing today. And uh, Damn. yeah, so that was brutal. But you just life keeps going. All right, so your brother, I'm sorry, your brother's no, seeing good. you deal with all this stuff. Yeah, and he took fifth in the state of New Jersey for wrestling, so he was okay. really good. And uh, he was like, "Dude, it's just amazing. You're getting up and not letting these people stop you, and you're working your butt off." And he uh, he took a teaser, like two minute trailer teaser thing of me just talking about what it's like to be a blind wrestler and growing up and i was also accepted to a high school that both my brothers went to and then when the president died they sent a letter saying you're no longer accepted we don't want to have to provide any accommodations for you or anything like who that. who sent this this was a high school that i was supposed to go to it was a private high school and they were like you're never mind yeah they rescinded my if that's the right word they yeah. rescinded my uh acceptance after the president who gave me the handwritten letter of acceptance died. I and that see. was eighth grade year. Jesus. Yeah, I'll never forget that. And that was brutal because I was like, I can't go somewhere because it's something I can't even control with my life, you know? So acceptance was... Wait, can you read Braille? Yeah, that's what I read. Did that letter come in Braille? No. <laughs> well, okay, which is cruel as fuck. <laughs> but also, went... but here's the thing. Someone else is sharing that news with you in your life. There's two people that are being like, fuck, that sucks. Yeah. Who's uh, reading that to you? My mom. Oh. And I'll never that's forget. That's got to gut a mom. She was at this school at the meeting. They wouldn't let me go to the meeting because they didn't want me to have to experience that. My parents wanted me to be there, but the school wouldn't let me. Mm-hmm. And my mom was like crying like crazy. I went to this school in Philadelphia when I was younger. I used to go from Jersey to Philly every day to learn it was a school for the blind to learn how to read and write and braille and all that stuff and the principal was there it was a catholic school and she was there sister meg i'll never forget and my mom's like crying in the meeting like any like mom would be you know just so upset and my sister meg looks at my mom she's like and the school is called there's christian in the name Mm -hmm. i'm not gonna shout out the school but um the sister looks at my mom she's like Sue, what are you crying for? This is this school ain't Christian. And they walked out. And the it was nun. like, yeah. So it was like real powerful. And 
so there was all that that I dealt with. My brother was just like inspired by me, like just not letting any of that stop me. I talked about what it was like to be a blind wrestler. And my junior year when I won districts, my brother posted it saying, this is my little brother. I want to make a film about him. I don't have all the resources. If you're a camera operator, producer, whatever, like, please reach out. And Chris Sikorsky, who's an independent filmmaker, who was my high school teammate, my high school coach's college teammate. No shit. Yeah. He reached out and to my brother and said, what are you doing with this? This story's amazing. My brother wanted to make like a short film, mm -hmm. like, you know, 10, 20 minutes. And Chris and him sat down and decided to make a full feature length of my senior year and like follow me around everywhere, uh, get all this like raw footage and put it together at the end. And people were like, how is it having all those cameras? I'm like, I didn't see a thing. So it didn't bother <laughs> me. <laughs> you didn't <laughs> see shit. <laughs> <laughs> so that was one thing but it definitely added some pressure because the whole story is like trying to become the first blind state champion okay. of New Jersey and that's never happened no to this day well so spoiler you know what alert. happened yeah spoiler alert <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, unless you got one more in, you, yeah. bro. you got one more. Dude, right every in time you. I watch that film, I it gives me freaking PTSD. Because I lost by a point to go oh. to stage. It was brutal, and uh, so they just they followed me around, got all, like thousands of hours of footage, and then after senior year, kind of got put on the shelf because life happened for everyone. Mm -hmm. And then two, I graduated two thousand thirteen. So in two thousand fifteen. Chris takes it off the shelf. He's like, there's an amazing story here. I got to put it together. He puts together the first 15 minutes, and the, he calls my brother all excited. They're both pumped. And the day or two before that, my brother was supposed to meet with him and see it, he didn't wake up from his sleep at the age of 27. And it was from like- what? It just bad bash. Like, no. yeah. He wasn't like that at all. But it's just one time could be the wrong. Yeah. Of like, I, it wasn't, I don't even know, man. It was just, it was really tough. And I remember I was living in California at the time I came home. And to add insult to injury, two months or a couple months after that happened, I'm at my buddy's house and someone's like, you got to go home. You got to go home. And like, just pulling me home. Like, it, this voice in my head was so loud. And I get home. I was like, I got to go home. They were all going out. And I made my buddy drive me home. And I found my mom at the bottom of the stairs with, no. in a coma. What? She had fallen down the stairs and like hit her head. And it was like a traumatic brain injury. She was in a coma for like two months. And it was like the scariest thing ever. Is she okay now? Yeah, she's oh doing amazing. God. Like miraculous recovery. Um, she just... And that's within <laughs> two months of your brother passing away? Uh not two. It was August to January, so it was pretty clo seconds, close enough. Basically. Yeah, and you know when life happens, well, it this happens is what you hard. were telling me outside. Yeah. Like to, to add insult to injury, your brother dies right before the documentary comes out. Doesn't get to see it. You can't fucking see it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Nobody in the family seeing this seen motherfucking it. documentary. <laughs> Here's uh, another thing I'm realizing too, and I hate to say this, but I have to because it's what the show is all about. But. <laughs> Your brother wanted to make a short film. <laughs> if they would have gone with the shortcut, oh, it might have made it out. He just oh, seen it. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. They had to go feature like you. God damn it. They had to go feature like you, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, man. That is, I never thought about it like that. <laughs> I figured you had. I figured that you had. So <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh man god that's terrible oh you had to do the fucking long one <laughs> i'm telling you i feel it's in my bones i feel like i oh, no, need to do this short true. one here man he didn't even see the trailer <laughs> oh, damn it god and after he died chris came to the funeral and like vowed like to us and my family like no matter what it takes i'm finishing this Hell thing yeah. it's a great story like in his memory for everyone Hell and yeah. i gotta give a lot of credit to chris because he had all these different cameras that were taking footage the whole time and like people helping him is all out of pocket, like funded independently. And he went through like tens of thousands of hours of footage, getting the right angles to line yeah. things up just to make this a story. And 
he did an incredible job. Like it, you wouldn't think you're watching a documentary. It's like a movie almost. And That's great. There's some really special scenes in there where my brother surprises me. There's an interview with my brother at the end that That's I didn't even nice. know about. Yeah, so it's like my brother lives on forever through that film, which is yeah. great. And we raised money on Kickstarter. We had to raise money after, so we had the trailer that Chris made and like told the backstory. And we had to raise $36,000 by the end of the month or else it all goes back. And in four days and six hours, we raised thirty six grand. And then, wow, yeah, it was incredible. Like all these people coming to bat and like just people we had no idea who, were, who they were all over the country and world, like just giving money to the film and wanting to see it finish. And we raised like 87 k at the end of the month. Fuck yeah. But we actually needed that much. We were just scared to put that. Yeah. So it I was it was amazing to see that happen well and then when the trailer the trailer went viral or across like a bunch of platforms had like a couple million views and i'm sitting at home feeling sorry for myself like wrestling didn't go as planned basically like i did really well i won like 122 matches in high school holy shit dude yeah and one district twice yeah it was I like I thought I sucked at the end of it, but when I look back, I'm like, I actually did pretty good, you know? It's hard to see that in the moment. And that's a one on one sport. I was just talking to a friend about this yesterday. Of all the sports I played, and I played soccer, uh football. basketball, baseball, football, lacrosse, fuck you name it. We played it. And wrestling was the one sport where if you truly cheated yourself, you you literally paid for it. Oh, you yeah. knew, you knew. There wasn't a guy behind you that could pick up the fumble or or you know miss uh, follow uh, follow you up on a missed ground ball. It's just if you, like that the kid you hit, he was leaning. Yeah, he was leaning. There was nobody in there there's that only, could push him back up and help him. It's just him. And there's only one person you could blame. That's it. The referee. That's it. <laughs> the ref. It's always yeah, the ref. It's always the ref. Mm-hmm. But. uh that was yeah so i'm sitting home like watching all this stuff happen with the film and i'm like damn like i want to get back after something like a goal you know like i need to really strive for something because i'm feeling like very stagnant at the moment and don't feel like i'm moving forward i'm still grieving my brother like always grieving him but that that time is so fresh and I'm sitting home, I get a phone call, and they're like, is this Anthony Ferraro? And I'm like, yeah, who the hell is this? And they're like, it's, it's the United States. you always answer the phone. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, it's the United States Olympic Committee. I'm like, you it? got the wrong number. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, who the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I think I have the wrong number. <laughs> So who is it calling? The United States Olympic Committee. Okay. And they're like, we saw your documentary. If you have any of that talent left. If you, <laughs> <laughs> you still got it. How, old is it? How old is it? How old is that? Documentary, bro? <laughs> so it came out in like 2018, but it was from high school. Yeah, so it was yeah, like, yeah. they're like, if you got anything left in you, would you consider training judo to try and compete in the Paralympics? And I was like, shit, I guess this was that call I was looking yeah. for. And like, when these opportunities come in life, you got to take Listen, them. Listen, that's opportunity calling little. Yeah, exactly. And you try to be like, who the fuck is yeah, this? Who the fuck are you? <laughs> so wait, you never had taken or studied judo before? No. But they're asking like, hey, we got this slot we need to fill. Yeah, well, they're trying to get... So with Paralympic judo, the only disability is visual impairment. So what do you mean? Oh, that's the only one you're allowed to have. Yeah, in judo. For, I see. Yeah, so it was. Now it's like, I go. Why? F- Why couldn't you be missing like part of your arm? I think it's just. <laughs> Why couldn't you? I don't know, man. Cause you can't <laughs> you know? grab. You can't, but you could still get in there. I, I could. I bet. Look, you know damn well like I do. It doesn't. Strength has got nothing to do with your senses. This no. motherfucker will figure out a way to chicken wing your neck off. That's you know what I mean? Like, ah, no, it could be a disadvantage. No, that's it could a be good another point. unfair disadvantage. It's a great point. I don't know why they don't. <laughs> why? Why couldn't you do judo with just missing a hand? That's a great question. I, you would think they would. Now. Would, would that be acceptable? If, is missing a hand acceptable for the Paralympics? What is the actual definition? Is it any? What do you know? Do well, they have a they have a all, written definition? There's or? all different disabilities for different sports, okay. which is kind of crazy. Okay, like there's wheelchair basketball. Right. Okay. Gotcha. So they kind of. I don't. But are know. you allowed to play that? I don't know. That's a good question. 
I don't think so. You're like, I don't know where the fuck I am out there, but man, line think, me up, but I'm hitting threes all day, motherfucker. What if you're Steph Curry from the fucking wheelchair? Dude, I had um, you know Marshawn Lynch? Yeah. I was at a event, a, a cannabis and basketball event. Okay. A, in Arizona. And I was trying to make a layup. And I had Kelly, my wife, tapping on the backboard with the, my cane. Oh yeah, I've seen I've seen people do this yeah. for a foul shot. So, so I went up to, to do a layup, and I had no idea that Marshawn was trying to block me the whole nah. time, and I jumped over him. Uh, like, no, what? yeah, I made it. <laughs> and people were like, Marshawn was really trying to get you because <laughs> we were playing this joke. He's Is like, that you... somewhere on video? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you got to sh- you got to share that. I threw one. a football to Gronk. I've done a few things. It's been Hell fun. yeah. But he was he was the whole time he's like you ain't fucking blind and like just messing with me and we had a great time but and then uh uh Derek Fisher taught me how to shoot a free throw. Okay. So that was fun. But yeah, we the Paralympics called and I just started training like nonstop. Now how old were you when you started training for that? 2018. So what's it 23 5 years ago? 23. So you're 28 now? Yeah. And at 20, so five years out of high school, you start training for the, the Paralympics. Yeah. And in a sport you've never, never trained done. in. Okay. They sent me, <laughs> it's all self funded, so I had to get myself places. But what? Yeah, that's, there's no money in the Paralympics. It's bullshit. The, everything's self funded, getting all these competitions, and you got to get to the competitions. What's the, what's the reward? A medal? I guess so. What about your cash back? Like I, it cost me fifteen thousand dollars to get here. Yeah, now they're starting. Yeah, you to like, took third. <laughs> the, the <laughs> you got somebody to help you get up get on the sponsors. <laughs> but now they're starting to pay for if you get a medal, like at world championships and stuff, they'll like pay you a couple thousand dollars, which isn't that much that in the grand bullshit. scheme of things. So it's really just oh man, a self. It's I don't know, man. Well, I, yeah. What actually is it? See, I struggle with that thought all the Cause time. Because it sounds to me like let's strip away what who's involved and all that. Like let's get all our feelings out of it. It sounds like a company based off of people funding themselves to get to these places to do these events so that the said big company can get the sponsors and stuff and make the money and, and they pay can- them nothing. And you're like the show for them. That's it. Yeah, it's it's crazy. And sounds a lot like comedy. It, <laughs> <laughs> sounds a lot like it's a comedy. great parallel. <laughs> and uh, but they do for like people that have placed in the Olympics before. Mm. They'll fund their journey moving forward. Okay. So they're like, this person's worth my time, type of thing. And so they, then you head out on this journey. Do you go out and do it, dude? I went to England. I went yeah. to Tokyo. I went to Brazil. I went to Brazil. How Germany. much money? Hold on. Before we talk about how well you did, how much money do you think you've spent on the Paralympics? Fifty thousand dollars. Jesus Christ! How much you think you've got back from them? Three concussions. <laughs> 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 oh, shit, that's a great answer. <laughs> oh man! Fuck. All right. So, how many years are you doing this? Man, then? you're making me not want to do this anymore. <laughs> you just t- you're telling me. You said you questioned it all I do, the time. I do. I do. I feel like you're asking the right <laughs> questions. Is what I'm saying. Here. I don't blame you for questioning it. <laughs> I guess it's more like staying in shape, the mental, like having something yeah. to challenge yourself. Because you always got to be out of your comfort zone in life, you know? And how are you doing out there? I'm doing Are you right, whipping I'm, these Brazil kids' ass? And I shit? took third place in Brazil. Fuck yeah. And while the, I beat a Brazilian while the whole fucking arena is going, Brazil, Brazil. <laughs> like yeah, shaking yeah, the yeah, shit. Yeah. I was like, America, oh, motherfucker. <laughs> 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 Who's got the best crowds? Who shows up Brazil like hard? for sure. Yeah, they yeah. show up hard. Yeah, they do, huh? And then like these like Central a- Asian countries. Like I went to Azerbaijan. Never even heard I, of it. I didn't hear of it before I went there. I had to learn how to pronounce that shit. And like they, those people are nuts because all they do is wrestle and do judo. And so the the whole uh, whole people of yeah the, people everyone. doing that yeah, yeah. and if it's you're like blind, we'll soccer Paralympics yeah yeah. And then, uh, so I stuffed like five years of judo in like two years and like like 15 almost. So I got like my brown belt pretty quick just from competitions, 
Like I won the black belt division a few times in like local sighted tournaments. And are you wrestling any sighted kids during this at or, or, uh, at all? Not in the qualifying tournaments. So, so but when you're doing judo, um, go ahead. Sorry. No, you're good. Just I, I just want to know: is it only sight? You said the only missing sight. Yes. Okay. Some have deaf, but they have to be blind. Okay, also, I was going to ask you that. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Helen Keller's out. There. You got you. Listen, I know you can't hear. But unless you can't see, you can't fucking. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if somebody's translating this to you right now. But unless you can't see, man, you ain't getting. In this Can you term. sign that, please? No, and and the crazy thing is, there's people that cheat. That like countries will cheat to get people that could actually see in the Paralympics. How do they do it? They just lie on the vision tests, and now they have like. Really strict, like optometrists and stuff. When you go to classify your vision, I was gonna say, like these people, how do they, how do they act blind? How do you act blind? I don't know. How, how do you act? Blind? You just run into shit. Uh, hold on to people. I've been doing wear it my glasses. whole life. They wear glasses and shit. Yeah, like Yeah, yeah, that stuff. But like, for example, like a country like I'm trying to think, like maybe Ukraine. Like they get treated like royalty when they are like medalists. Really? They, some of them have gotten sports cars as rewards in the past. Get the fuck How out. How the hell are you going to give a blind person a sports <laughs> car that they're driving around? So this last... What do the Americans give? Nothing. They get a medal. A medal. <laughs> Here's some McDonald's bucks. Yeah, because we're sponsored by McDonald's. Thank you for getting us sponsored. Free refills Dude. for life. <laughs> hey, can you only wear Nike because we're sponsored by Nike? Mother, I'm not sponsored by <laughs> yeah, Nike. I'm not, not that's what I'm me. saying. That's what I'm saying. There it is. And it's like, Listen to the corporations too, man. Listen, man, they didn't even like me in the beginning because I had long hair. That's how like freaking uh, like cookie cutter they are too. They want you to be a certain way. And they did not like me. I am. I'm blind, yeah, motherfucker. I'm blind. <laughs> Show me the circle. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's a lot of rules in this motherfucking yeah. Paralympics. I need sponsors. Oh my God. All right. So let's shift gears for yeah. a second because uh congratulations. You and your wife are about to have a baby, your first baby, right? Yeah. It's August. Fucking 5th. awesome. Due in August. Yeah. Um, do you know if you're having a boy or you don't have to say? No, we're not finding out. Great. Yeah. I love it. Did you find out? Yeah, I found yeah. out. Yeah. I thought we would, but we decided not to. Because you don't know if you're ever going to have another one. So it's like, why not have the surprise? It's, it's true. And I'm going to have a nurse yeah, whisper in my ear when the baby comes out so I can be the one to yell, it's a boy or it it's a girl. A, it has a penis. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like a girl. All That's right. what I feel like. Let's talk about this yeah. because I was saying outside, and you can ask your wife, like, sight has nothing to do with it. Being a new parent is fucking terrifying. Oh, yeah. With all your senses. I can't imagine doing it without sight. So the terrifying part is terrifying for everybody, and you're throwing in no sight on top of this. So I have a couple questions first because I'm already having anxiety yeah. for you. But <laughs> do you or can you tell if your child is predisposed to uh, blindness? Is there Are there tests or anything like that? Are you worried about that? There are, but some of them are, like, invasive. And I'm not uh -huh. worried about it. If the baby's blind, it's going to have the best damn teacher in the world. No doubt. That's one thing. No and doubt. then second, it's like, why put that fear in you the whole time? And, uh, oh, my condition is so rare. <laughs> like, for in order for my baby to be blind... I have something called Leber's congenital amaurosis, and it's all genetics. Like, so there's there's probably thousands of different types of genes of Leber's congenital amaurosis, and within that, in order for the kid to have Leber's, my gene Kelly has to be a carrier of the same exact gene as my condition I see. inside the genes. Okay, and my parents didn't know they were carriers, and we have. I'm the last of five, and they all had one in a four chance of being blind, and I was the only motherfucker no that got way. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Either win the lottery or be blind. 
There's no quick fix for anxiety and depression. It's not finding a new therapist or starting an exercise routine. It's not more regular meditation or a better diet. Sometimes you need something to unlock your brain, a new way of thinking about and seeing the world. And maybe that thing is guided ketamine therapy from MindBloom. There's a new tool to improve your mental health, at-home ketamine therapy. MindBloom is the leader in at-home ketamine therapy, having safely helped thousands of people overcome their anxiety and depression, me included. Unlike traditional talk therapy, ketamine works quickly and doesn't have the unpleasant side effects of traditional antidepressants. In a study of over 1,200 Mind Bloom clients, 89% reported improvements in their anxiety and depression after only two sessions. I've gone through quite a bit in the last six months, and I can tell you that this absolutely helped me with my anxiety. So right now, MindBloom is offering my listeners 100 bucks off your first six-session program when you sign up at mindbloom.com slash honeydew and you use the promo code honeydew. Take the first step and break free from your anxiety and depression with MindBloom. Mindbloom.com slash honeydew and use promo code Honeydew. Now, let's get back to the do. Oh, man. All right. So talk to me about being a new, like, what are your concerns? Because I, every, look, every, forget even being a new dad, because that's a separate thing than being a mom, of course. But being a new parent is terrifying, especially today. Um, I'm not trying to talk you out of this like I'm trying to talk you out of that Paralympics. No, you know no, what I'm saying? no, no, no. Uh, but I'll tell um, you everything. Yeah, tell me. What are you going through right now? Like, what are your biggest fears? What? How, how are you prepping? What are you doing? So we got, like, all the little things, like the uh, bassinet and the carriers and the stroller, all that stuff, diapers. But I'm worried, like, one, if it's a girl, I'm worried about changing diapers, like, sanitary reasons. Like, if I sure. get, you know, point. poop in the wrong spot. Yeah, you can't see. Yeah, like that I'm worried about. Two, this is more like. You just leave shit on a boy's dick. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You're not worried about that at all. <laughs> Fuck his little nuts. It's fine. It's, you the baby. You yeah, got some shit little, on the baby's yeah, nuts. Yeah, right. exactly. That's normal. He's not going to get an infection. Yeah, he's going to look like everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> just hose them all little spray yeah, goods. All, <laughs> put them in the sink but that like i'm thinking i'll use the sink man oh like, you just should 100 yeah. use the sink yeah don't listen do it however you do it yeah just exactly. do it well for your child so your child fucking loves you and respects you and you know looks that's up to it you is. that's it just do listen listen to nobody and everybody and then do whatever the fuck works the best for you that's it we used to, exactly. I used to, I did the sink they even make those little tubs to put in the sink and stuff yeah, too exactly. yeah exactly that's yeah. what i'm thinking as long Instead as your like sink's change, clean i mean don't be putting it in there with all the raw garbage those <laughs> yeah <laughs> You better make sure yeah, you you're not on the garbage disposal side. <laughs> you better make sure. Oh, thank God we yeah. don't have one of those. I'd ceiling fans. Watch out for ceiling fans. You lift the fucking... Cut, 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 yeah. Cut. yeah, for real. Oh, shit. For real, ceiling fans. I didn't think about that. Mm -hmm, there you go. And then uh, the, the this is like more as a parent, I guess, because because I've lost a brother mm -hmm. and you've seen like your family go through heartbreak. I'm worried about the first time my kid has to experience like adversity or heartbreak. Because I know that, like, I've been through adversity and it sucks, but it does make you stronger. But watching that happen to a, you know, your child is like, that's got to be rough, you know, like them yeah. going through something emotionally or mentally. Like, I'm worried about stuff like that. Too. It's going to start fucking with you a little bit. Big, but here's the good news for you you have a mom. Are you close with your mom? Yeah. Uh, my, could, I have 60 cousins that all live in Jesus the area. Jesus Christ. My mom's the second oldest of 13. Holy shit. Yeah, like a lot dude. of babysitters. So, but the thing is, unfortunately, here's another dis, uh, unfair disadvantage. You have your mom to talk to about the fears of losing a child. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's like you, true. you really have, that's going to shift for you in life. Seeing your mom now as a parent and a person, and now she's got to raise a son who uh, doesn't have sight, and uh, she just buried a kid. Like, man. Yeah, they went above and beyond. Like, especially with my blindness, they made sure I had the right tools. And like, mm -hmm. I'm forever grateful for that. I remember being at a store, and my mom would be like, "I'd be like five years old. Can I get this toy?" She'd be like, "Here's five bucks. Go find the counter and pay for it." And I'd be like, <laughs> "What? I don't want this toy anymore." <laughs> so, so are you just? Was it just the two of you, you and your brother? No. So I'm one of five. So five. I had two older brothers, two older sisters, and. uh yeah, we all grew up together in the same house. My dad's like my best friend in the whole world. Um, 
So, you know, my dad's like, your mom was tough. If it was up for me, I'd be coddling you everywhere, uh, holding your hand through life. But I'm thankful that, you know, they let me make my mistakes and go out and, like, be independent. Like, I used to... I grew up like skateboarding, surfing, and then I used to ride bikes until I started hitting parked cars. My mom was like, nah, no more bikes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never forget that day. I went ass over tea kettle into the windshield. <laughs> People used to call my mom like, Anthony's out on a bike. Like, oh, yeah, he's, riding him. He's, he's out here wrecking bikes. Okay. <laughs> Oh shit! Oh man, dude. I can't even believe I'm having a baby. We only had sex one time. What? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Oh my god, dude! Don't fucking say that. I was I, like, you're a mir- that's a miracle, baby. No, I'm joking. But it's crazy, like how because some people they say it takes years, you know, of trying or it like can, a year, yeah, yeah, it can. Yeah, you don't. Know. It happened quick. Good after trying, so good because yeah, it could take people. Some people can't. They have to have help with it. You know, it could take a while. Yeah. Um. All right, what else, what other fears? You said you you worried about your your child's first time dealing with adversity. What else? Um, like, well, is your dad still alive? By yeah. the way, yeah. And and so you've got him as a a person to talk to Absolutely. as a father for advice as well. So that's really good for you. Yeah. Okay. And I'm glad that we both Kelly and I both work from home, so mm-hmm. we will be able to be around the kid like all the time, mm-hmm. which I think is important. Like a lot of people going you know after like three four months they're back to work and there's a babysitter now Mm -hmm. and you're spending like valuable like key moments away from your kid Mm -hmm. so i'm happy with that i'm scared like because once they start walking they start like trying to run away from you and shit dude that's when it changes i'm putting ankle bracelets that's when it changes dude it does as soon as they can walk and i'm telling you there's something I don't know what it is genetically weird about toddlers, but they run, They can run like a motherfucker. Yeah. But, they, but their legs are all weird. Sh- like they shouldn't. It, scientifically, it looks like they shouldn't be able to run like that, but they can haul ass. And you're like, oh. And when you get my age and you have a kid, like everything's tight. You can't just, I can't just break out into a full sprint anymore yeah. right away. I got to stretch for 30 fucking minutes. You know what <laughs> I'm like, saying? like, hold up for yeah, 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Damn, yeah. So that, like, just, it doesn't bother me so much, but I know there's going to be people's opinions about, like, oh, he's blind and had a baby. Like, that's messed up. Really? You, yeah. You, you, you've you dealt with that kind of... Yeah, um, like, on the internet, like, some people will be like, also, like, it's, they could be like, it's uh, irresponsible to have a kid if he could, ha- like, they could have your disease. So it's like... I don't know. Things like that kind of bother me. I didn't know you were getting that kind of hate. Not much, which I'm grateful for because I get hate every day on the internet. For people, what? People Usually. say I'm not blind. Why? Because they think I'm just using it to get followers. I'm like, I'll trade you all my followers right now for your two good eyes. Yeah. It's crazy. People always trying to like, you know, Doubt break, it. break down that I'm not blind. They're like, well, he looked at the camera. I'm like, yeah, because my wife's yelling at me where the camera is. <laughs> I also know where sound is, yeah. too, motherfucker. Um, but what else? The the diaper changing, definitely. Just that's one. Uh, me and Dan, Dan. So Dan's a blind dad. Mm-hmm. And he taught me. We did a video together to promo the podcast. We do like little TikToks and stuff like that, reels. And he had me changing this. We got a, a baby doll that you could feed the food to and it poops it out. For real? Yeah. It's like this little thing. And he was showing me how to change the diaper. And he was in the video. He was like laying on the bed while I was changing the diaper with a mouthful of water, spitting it in my face <laughs> so I could get ready for the pee in yeah, the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was funny. You're not even going to yeah. see it coming, dude. You won't even see it coming. <laughs> And then, like, another thing is, like, since I'm blind, like, I kind of move, I move fast for a blind person, and sometimes it's to my, like, fault, like, it's to my demise. You know, I'll be running through my apartment, and a door will be half open, and I just smack that thing Mm. with my head. So I'm worried, like, I need to really slow down Mm. when I have the kid so I can make sure the baby's safe when I'm carrying them. All right. Do you, um... Do you use your cane around your home, or are you fully used to your home where you don't need it? Fully used to my Except home. Except for shit like that where a door <laughs> might be halfway yeah. open. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm constantly, like, 
you know, I'm a train wreck. I'll like bump into shit all the time. My shins have permanent dents in them from like just running into stuff. Um, is, th- is there anywhere else you are comfortable not using your cane outside of your home? Like my parents' house, but my mom's always moving shit around. Yeah. So that's another one. Uh, just like places I frequent often, like if we're just hanging out, mm-hmm. but not like grocery stores or anywhere like in the public. And especially like I used to live in New York with Kelly and I I was so anti-cane. Like I wouldn't use it because I was afraid how people looked at you and how the, people will talk to you slower and louder. And Do they really? Yeah, it's insane. I'm like, I'm not deaf. I'm, I can actually right? hear better. Yeah. <laughs> They're doing that shit to you. Like, yeah, well, they're like, I hear you Anthony, so the blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, really? Like, it's so, it's so demeaning. Like, it's just, it's like, really? You got to talk to me like that? And so I was living in New York and I wouldn't use my cane. And Kelly used to be like, like the first time we ever met, we went to the outlets and I'm walking around trying to be cool guy, like not using a cane. And I'm walking with my feet, using my feet to feel. And we're in the Timberland store. I'll never forget that. She's like, do you need help? And I'm like, no, I got this. Two minutes later, I run straight into the pole in the middle of the store. (laughs) And she grabs me. She's like, get over here. (laughs) So things like that. Just freaking, I I send it way too fast a lot. And then in the city, I kept shoulder checking people. And people would be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And like get all pissed off. So then I started using the cane. And it started parting people like the Red Sea. Is that right? Yeah, people get out of your way. They look out for you more. Like... When I lived there, I used to have like you know my homeless friends that would walk me down the street Nuh-uh. and stuff. Yeah, we used to get all get along. It was just I used to have guys read me the menu at the food trucks. Like it was, it was great. That's nice. So that opened a whole new world of freedom mm-hmm. and independence. My mom's a freaking orientational mobility instructor, which is like teaching kids how to use the cane. So I always tried to like Wait. rebel. Wait. Did that come after? Yeah. Your, okay. I was yeah, going to yeah, say, yeah. what are the fucking odds? I know. I know. So after you uh, were born blind, she took up this occupation? Yeah. She Hell went yeah. back to school and got her master's. Damn. Um, she actually got gifted like scholarship because we were in this huge court case because they wanted the public school in New Jersey wanted me to go there, but they were only going to give me like two hours of Braille training a week, mm-hmm. which was like you're learning print every day. So it just wasn't enough. And my mom researched and found the best school in Philly and they sent me there, but the, the state didn't want to provide any transportation. And they said, you don't need that training. Like this is plenty type of thing, which sets you up to fail in the future. Mm -hmm. And then all these people from like different organizations came to like fight for me. Wow. And the Pennsylvania college of optometry gifted my mom a scholarship to get her master's after that. Fuck yeah. So it was awesome. So she learned a lot. And then my sister became an optometrist. No shit. All right. So uh, that was pretty cool. One thing I'm worried about, I actually am a little worried, like not worried, but if the kid is blind, like I know what I've gone through being blind and like the depression and stuff, like that would suck. But at least having a good role model raising Bingo. it. Yeah. Right. So all right, let me ask you some questions and yeah. you tell me how you deal with it. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about buckling the baby in the car seat. You show me once I got that down. You can do that, yeah. all the clicks and make yeah. sure it's in there tight I and might everything do it and proper. Backwards one time. Well, they go backwards at first. Oh shit. They're rear oh, facing oh, yeah. first, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And then you got to switch them around when they get big enough. Then eventually they're big enough and you're like, buckle your own motherfucking seatbelt, man. <laughs> you know, that's, they'll get there. <laughs> that's the thing. I'm going to teach this kid to do a lot. Like That's, an, that's what know. I want to ask. Are you going to teach them to be as independent as possible? Oh, yeah. All I'm right. going to teach them how to hold a camera and edit, too. <laughs> yeah. Put them to work. <laughs> no, but thankfully, like, my partner is incredible. Like, Kelly, yeah. she's amazing. And I just know she's going to be the best mom. And I can learn from her too. And she's really good at find like something I've never done before and then showing me a method to do it. Like she's really good with that. And then she'll make things accessible. Like I'm curious to see how like what baby things we're gonna make accessible. Because like in at our home, like she'll put dot like these bump dots on the washing machine so I know where everything is, like the mm-hmm. buttons because it's touch screen, and then like the spices in the kitchen, like that type of stuff. 
So she's oh, yeah. really thoughtful in putting herself in my shoes. We even went to like a dining in the dark. You, you trying to say she's pretty cool for a sighty? Yeah, she's all right for an able body. <laughs> Listen, man, I could never marry a blind person. I'd be screwed. You would be, I bro. I would be screwed. You'd be My fucked. Uber you bill would be would. out the window, dude. <laughs> shit. Oh, shit. I always tried to get an Uber driver job, but it never worked. What about um, when How? When do you think you'll feel comfortable enough to stay at home with the baby for and and for how long? That's a good question. I've thought about this too. Like, I don't know if we're gonna. So she's gonna breastfeed, but I don't know if we're gonna do like the bottles too. Mm -hmm. If we have the bottles, that'll be helpful. But I'm scared because when the baby cries, I'll start like freaking out. Like I don't know what the baby's crying for. But I guess you just learn those things You're right. as it goes. You're going to learn what the difference between hunger and pain yeah. and all those things are for sure. And yeah, that, like, will. so maybe, like. <laughs> but no I, offense, just looking at your baby also doesn't mean you got the answer either yeah, for that. You know exactly. what I mean? I, I am worried, like, not worried. I am bummed I'm not going to be able to see, like, the baby smile and, like, when it laughs, like, the little faces mm -hmm. it makes and stuff. Like, that's kind of a bummer. But. I'm sure that because like when you raise your kid, that's all they know at that time. So like they're gonna be used to having a blind dad. Like that's the other thing. I, I'm waiting for the day that my kid comes home and be like, "Daddy, how come no other daddies are blind?" Yeah, and I'm like, "Oh shit, we gotta." Have but this you can talk. have that conversation also because your dad wasn't. Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean. But like, you don't understand. Like mine wasn't. So yeah. I'm the, I'm I'm the one blazing the fucking trail over yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. And uh, just making it normal. Like I feel like the kid will learn like that. You know, dad can't see a wave. You gotta hug him or something like that. Um, Interesting. Yeah, I didn't even like think that. of that. Sure, yeah. Sure, so like sure. more like contact. So I'm really excited to wear like the baby carrier, so I could always have the baby against yeah. me. Yeah. Things like that. I'm, you should be able to just tilt your head down and kiss the top of their exactly. head. Exactly. That's where you sit. And my yes. buddy, like my one blind buddy, Nick, he uses like bells on his daughter's feet, like in a bracelet. Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely going to use stuff like that. That's smart. And I'm wondering like when I'm home alone, I don't know, man. Like it, it just scares me. But I'm thinking it's going to have to be like when we train Delta, my dog, like 10 minutes at a time when you leave them. So, like, Kelly, go leave for 10 minutes, and I'll yeah, see if I yeah, can do yeah, this, yeah, you know? Yes. Like, All right. And then kind of taking in increments. So that's a big thing. It's scary. It's terrifying. It's terrifying. It's exciting, Listen, though, this too. is what I'm saying. This is what I love about this show. I'm. It's such a perspective check because I am a parent. Uh, I have sight. Now, I've lost my smell. I'm still not with, without 90% of my smell since mm -hmm. December of 2020. And there have been times where the smoke detector went off. I couldn't smell smoke. Um, there was an alert that hit our phones like a... Um, Amber alert that said there was a natural gas leak in the neighborhood and people had to get out. I couldn't smell it. I couldn't smell the... Um, uh, heaters in the house, nothing. And I was like, holy shit, this is actually fucking dangerous not to have. And then here you are coming into here talking about parenting without sight. And that's where I'm like, Ryan, shut the fuck up, bro. <laughs> shut up with your little smell shit. Yeah, if you took my smell, I don't know what I'd do, though. I'd be screwed. Well, you definitely could get a different fucking um, sport in a Paralympics. <laughs> You got to be missing your smell and your sight yeah, yeah, for this You can one. only have no smell for this one. <laughs> we have to sign you up. Oh, shit. oh man. Um, okay, here's another question. How do you, I don't want to use the word train at all, but how do you teach is the word um, someone who has sight to live with someone who doesn't? Like what are the things you've had to teach Kelly and that you know you're going to have to teach your child? Um, Kelly like learns as we go. She like is a forward thinker, so she's kind of always thinking ahead. Mm -hmm. Like I kept running into my. We have a bed frame, and the edge is pretty sharp. Yeah. I kept running into it, cutting my shin, and she taped a pillow to it so I wouldn't start keep doing that. So it's more like a learn as you go. But I think the kid will learn like just because it's that's its life. Like learning like a. Just knowing the dad's blind and that he can't see. 
But then I'm worried the kid's going to think everyone else can't see and starts right. treating people like that, too. That's interesting, yeah. too. Yeah. But, like, Dan's kid, for example, he's really thoughtful about different things, like helping his dad around if he needs it. Um, so I'm just... I'm going to have to teach a lot through, like, feel, like, showing... That, like, if I'm trying to teach my kid how to, like, shoot a basketball or something that's one thing i hate that i can't play mm -hmm. catch with my kid you know what i mean i was gonna like, ask you about sports and yeah catch and that's things like, like that. but i maybe, mean you you could play yeah <laughs> it, it, it's gonna hurt yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you could play because when i was younger i used to even have enough sight to where if you threw a football up high enough mm -hmm. i could see it in the sky like that you the could make out the it. shape yeah and like and then try and catch follow it, it to your yeah hands. but it's gonna be interesting like my kid's gonna know uh, balls with bells in it and stuff. Yeah. You know, things like that. Like, I'm definitely not going to let it stop me from doing that stuff. But also, like, I'm going to teach my kids so many other things that, like, they might not even worry about playing catch with me and stuff that like that. That was my next question is what are the things you're you, – those are your worries. What are you excited What about Skate, you? Skate – like, Skate, skateboarding, yeah. uh, music, because I, I play guitar and sing, like, professionally, and doing stuff like that. Like, I jam with my dad. And that's like a really cool bonding experience that we have. Um, I'm worried. I mean, I'm bummed I can't take my kid for a drive. Like, because I remember so Again, many moments driving my dad. <laughs> you could. <laughs> you didn't get pulled over. What are you going to do? Take my license? You got to make sure she's in that, or he's in that baby seat yeah. buckled up right now. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I hear you on that. That does. Because I, I, I spent a lot of time with my dad in the car. Yeah. And that was where a lot of like conversations yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah, for things sure. Things like that. Music, you're learning about music. Yeah, listen exactly. Listen to this, listen to that. Do you think you'll ever just go sit in the car and just be like listening to this and listening to yeah, that? Yeah, I'm sure. Well, now you got like the echoes and stuff too, yeah. so I'd play that. Um, I've been – I don't know. I just – I'm really going to bring this baby, like try and mold it to our lifestyle because we travel so much. Mm -hmm. I know people are like, good luck, but like I'm really going to try. Just if you raise it and that's all it knows, then – it should be all right. I it, mean, there's going to be bumps. It will be fine. Yeah. Yeah, of course. But that's the other thing, like schedules. I'm, I know I'm not going to be able to train and then lay down all day. Like, you know, like have really hard workout sessions and then just kind of lay around. I'm going to have to be dad mode. So like changing my life like that. Like I said the dumbest. I've said the dumbest things during these pregnancy. this pregnancy. Like Kelly will be like, oh, I'm feeling so fat. And I'll be like, yeah, I know, me too. And she's like, can you shut the fuck up <laughs> for nine months? <laughs> and I, I don't know what made me say this. I regretted it right after I said it, but I was going through like one of those panic modes. Like my life's about to change. Like we were in Italy and we were like having dinner and just like date nights and stuff. And I looked at her, I was like, you better not be one of these moms that puts the baby first. <laughs> she looked at me like, I don't know what made me say that. And I, I don't <laughs> fear. I, 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 yeah, fear. fear. Exactly. Yeah. I'm like, I still need to be first in your life. But uh, just things like that. Uh, it's freaking. It's a. I felt so. I felt every single emotion through this pregnancy, mm -hmm. like fear, excitement, almost regret, but like not. You know, like well, shit. Also, what did I do? I mean, I can understand having Kelly as your partner who helps you through everything, who now has to help take care of a baby, and you feeling like I'm gonna be neglected or yeah. looked after less or taken care of less. And, and I'm here to tell you that's definitely gonna happen. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt, it has to happen. Yeah, and, yeah, and the other to. thing is like we do everything together with the social media content. She and the podcasting. She like films, edits, produces everything. Damn. She and has a full time job after that like doing web it's development time to hire. it's time to hire that's the thing I, i'm hoping that things can take care of themselves where we could hire someone else too to there's help an old saying on. with babies comes money so yeah Hopefully yeah i'm hoping happens. more like people see i'm having a kid so they'll like hire me for more stuff too because i do a, motivational speaking is like my main money gig mm. and been trying to just stack up as many jobs as i can before the baby comes and just getting ready. Um, it sucks when you do your taxes. You're like, I had that much money that I spent. You know, like I shouldn't have spent that much. And that, but you're like, you have to reinvest all back in your business. That's it. Yeah. So everything we make basically goes right back in. Mm -hmm. And I'm nervous about how that's gonna look. Like with 
trusting someone else to do certain things, you know, kind of give it because it's your baby, like the stuff you've created. Well, you got two of them. Yeah. <laughs> Literal one and yeah. yeah. I, no, listen, I, look. You get it. As a person, yeah, as a person with sight who is a fucking control freak when it yeah. comes to my <laughs> shit too, man, it's not easy to let go and, and trust other people. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, you are going to go through growing pains with that too because you're going to find people who are, they don't have your work ethic. They yeah. don't have your hustle. They don't care as much because it's not necessarily theirs. You and they know need I mean? to be told every little detail. Everything. You want can. someone, especially too, in your life, you need a proactive person who is like, already did this, I did this, this is handled, this is done, this is checked off, we got this. Still dealing with this, waiting on a call back from this. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you. Exactly. That's exactly it. And I just have to trust that it's going to be all right, you know, put put faith in it. And I just, I pray a lot. So I'm like, you know, put it all up there too. Mm -hmm. And just, I know everything. You don't get, in life, I really truly believe this, that you don't get anything handed to you that you can't handle. Like no matter the situation, there's people that have been through the craziest stuff, but they get through on the other side. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's oh, I'm having anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> I'm letting you have it too, dude. I know. But it, and Kelly's so proactive about all that stuff. Like we do everything, like from you know, seed to sale. Like it's just all the emails, the getting jobs, the re outreach, the marketing, the everything. So just trying to hope that it's still good. Like I could trust her with a camera, with a phone that she's getting the right angles and that, you know, mm -hmm. she can, cause she has all the visual. Now she's got to get the right angle to breastfeed the baby. Yeah. Somebody else has got to shoot that content. I know. And then I'm going to be like, I can't film right now cause the baby's crying mm -hmm. stuff like that. And it's just going to be a whole learning experience on top of everything else. You'll handle it. Yeah. You'll handle it. I know I will. It's just, it's change. You know, change is always, I say it all the time, it's a pain in the ass. But honestly, it's the best fucking thing for you. Yeah. It I, always makes things better. I truly believe that. And I think like, it gives, like the second she got pregnant, I felt like I was a dad already. Mm -hmm. And I, I started thinking differently. I started feeling differently about things. And it gives you a whole nother reason to live and not let your bullshit be so loud. Yeah. Like your little depressions and things. Like exactly. I felt like my depressions, like things that would keep me down, like none of that shit matters anymore. And it's really powerful too, because I'm like, it's not that bad. Like I'm about to have a kid that I have to keep alive and take care of and love and, and teach right from wrong and different mm -hmm. things like that. So there's, there's way too much stuff. My, I remember my dad looked at me. He's like, one day I was a little bummed out, like depressed. He's like, Anthony, you don't have time to be depressed anymore. You better pick this up. You know, oh, that's and, what I wanted to ask you. Are there things you've already asked your dad about? Just like, I used to cry to my dad in college that I was like, I don't know if anyone's ever going to love me. Um, like because I'm blind, no one I'll never be able to have a family. No one will ever want to have a kid with me. Like that was some of my biggest fears in life. Cause when I was in high school Then he's like, son, yeah. you're a fetish. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you this website over here. Yeah, he's like, type this in Google. <laughs> 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 the crazy thing is Kelly had love tattooed in Braille no way. on her wrist seven years before we ever met. How about that? And she didn't know any blind people. Yeah. Yeah, that was crazy. But because when I was in high school, I had a girlfriend that I was like very serious with. Mm -hmm. And I was in love. You know, you think it's like you think you're going to marry this person, whatever, which everyone kind of feels in their first real love. And I'll never forget. We broke up because her parents were like, He's never going to be able to drive you around. He's not going to be able to take care of you. He's not going to be able to do this. And that messed up my psyche like so bad. Like my confidence and self-worth and self-esteem, all that stuff. Like I just felt like who could ever love me then? So that was a tough one. And now look at you. Yeah. I'm, I can't believe it. It's, you know, like things have 
grown past my wildest like imagination and, and like what I ever thought. Like I used to be on uh, social security, mm-hmm. and I used to take that as like, you know, I'm I'm not because they set you up to fail. It's like you can't have a certain amount of money in your bank account. You can't have an income. Right. You, all this stuff. And the day I was able to say like get out of my life to them, it was the most like freeing, growing, independent experience. Like I felt like I finally made it, you know, like, but there's so many other struggles that come with that, but I'll gladly take those to be independent from that stuff. Good for you, dude. I'm happy for you, man. Thank you. Uh, This is a great episode and you're going to be a great dad. You are, Uh, you know, you can, the fact that you care already and that you're already worried about it is a step ahead of most people. Yeah, it really is. So good for you, dude. Mm -hmm. Um, Please plug and promote everything you'd like again. Yeah, uh, asfvision.com. You can find everything on there, like the link to the documentary, uh, Shot in the Dark, and then also like the Four Bad Eyes podcast. Please go listen to that. We're trying to grow it. And um, follow Kelly at Kelly for 24 on Instagram too. She does all the edits and everything you see me doing. So, And reach out if you want us to come – Try anything in life. We, I'm trying to go skydive and do anything. So, Are you? Yeah, I'll do anything All once. Right. All right, brother. Well, thank you very Thanks much. so much. And uh, thank you guys out there as well. Please go watch the special Lefty Son. Come see me on the road. Tickets available at ryansickler.com. And as always, Ryan Sickler on all social media. We'll talk to you all next week. Mm-hmm.